What does it say to go on the cross that Jesus said to us? It is finished. <coughs> what do you think he meant by that? It's finished. What was finished? Did he finish the cross? Okay, I've died. I've come and lived my life. I've done what God's asked me to do. It's finished. It's finished for me because I can't do it. You think that's what it meant? No. It meant it's finished. Finished means what? Nothing left to do. True? Then how come we have it? Why do we keep trying to score points when God has quit keeping score? Why do we keep do that? We don't believe that it is finished. It's finished. You know, I've, been, I've been struggling with this thing about people telling me, well, I'm really living. You tell me that I am crucified with Christ and I no longer live. But Christ lives in me. Well, what are you talking about? I'm still living. You know, I'm up here talking. Well, we want to the man. You know, no, I'm, I'm still. Okay. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is the life. Okay, what is Jesus' life like? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, self-control. That is life. Are you living that? If you're not, you're not living. Because He is what? The life. You may be existing, but you're not living. A man says, can you love your enemies without Jesus? No. Can you have peace without Jesus? No. Remember, Jesus is those things for you. If he, that's His character. That's His nature living in you. You can't conjure up love. You can't conjure up peace. You certainly can't conjure up patience. Can you? No. I'm going to be more patient. <laughs> You can't do that. You can't conjure up stuff. But if Jesus is your life, all that stuff will come naturally. Because that will be your nature. Uh, the, the stool, you know, that's probably one of our centerpiece illustrations here. That whoever sits on the stool of our life basically gets to make the choices. We made the choice to let Jesus sit on the stool of our life. But when we do that, and Jesus starts saying, listen, trust me, the number one thing that God created us to be is dependent upon Him for everything. Is that true? True. Can we do anything without Him? No. So we live in dependence upon the Lord, and He will do everything in us, through us, for us, and as us. Right? Amen. Then what is the problem? We believe that, but we won't give Him what? Control. That is the issue. And he, here's kind of what God gives us common grace. Common grace. You're sitting here and you're able to come to church. You're breathing. You're able to eat. You're able to sleep. You're able to do things. That's common grace. We didn't ask Him for that, but He does it anyway. You know? Faith means that we cooperate with God in what He wants to do in and through and for us and as us. We would do a lot more if we quit dragging our feet. Problem is, we just don't believe God will do that. Let me give you an illustration. Let's say that, that I take Jackson into a toy store. Okay? And the other end of the toy store is an electric stool. That's what he's always wanted. His daddy never would let him have one. But that's what he wants is an electric scuba. That's what he says, a scuba. Electric scuba. That's what he's always wanted. Back at the end of the toy store back here is the electric scuba. So we got to call Jackson and we're going down the aisle and say, Papa's got you something, buddy, that you've been wanting forever. Forever. Okay. 
So let's go down there and get it. And I'm walking with Jackson down through here. Okay? And, and he said, oh, oh, look at this nerf gun over here, man. Oh, look at this nerf gun. Nobody we got something there. Oh, hey, Papa, 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 how did you see that? Then I come down here. Oh, come on, look at that drone, Papa. Come on, Papa. Papa, look at No, Jack, come on. He does not know that the electric scooter is down He don't believe it. He's not thinking Papa's word. Something you've always wanted, better than anything you ever wanted, Jackson, is down there. He don't believe Papa. What he's wanting is the nerf gun and the drone, and he's grabbing it. And this is kind of the way we are. Kimmy, I got something beyond your wildest. Everything your heart's desire is down here. Come on, let's go. You want to get it? Yes. Okay, Lord, we'll take me there. And I put my hand in the Lord's, and I go down through there, and we're going to get joy and love and peace, and it is finished. Total dependence where I just said, joy, Jesus, and life just, he flows out of me. But I'm saying, oh, the fourth Lord, we got to go to church. You know, I've got to get this sermon ready. And Lord, I'm ready. Hey, hey, we got to watch the clips of the game. Amen. <laughs> And we're just and we're reaching for all that. And you know my kids. I need to get my kids straightened out and I'm just dragging. And I'm dragging the thing. We're getting there. Because I asked him to get me there. Is he going to be faithful if I ask him? Yes. If I put my hand in his, he's going to take me there. Now if I'm dragging my thing, it's going to take a little longer. Would you agree with that? Amen. This is why it takes us a long time because you're grabbing at all this other stuff that we think is going to fulfill us. But it ain't. You know it's not. And so he, he's pulling me along because he's got a hold of my hand. Because I, why? I asked him to. I gave him the stool. I gave him a hand. I said, Lord, I'll get distracted, but take me where you want me to go. But I keep getting distracted by what I think God wants for me. Does God not want me to grow a church? Does God not want me to teach? Does God not want me to encourage people? Does God not want me to do this? And I'm grabbing and saying, God, what are you doing? We're leaving behind the things that you get to me do. And I'm just walking along and I'm dragging the thing. And then one day he gives me a glimpse of the electric scooter. And let me tell you what the electric scooter is really like. When Jesus said it is finished, that means I'm, I'm finished trying to live a Christian life and I let Jesus just live his life through me, for me. And as me, here's the way it works. He doesn't need my help. He just wants to stay. Let me ask you, if Jesus was here, would he be loving people? Would he be kind to people? Yes. Would he be patient with people? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, he'd be all those things, right? Well, Jesus is alive. You know where he lives? He lives right here. He lives right there again. <laughs> you just go out and live. And, uh, and you just enjoy your life. God is the capital S source of our life, right? We're the little S source. He is the initiator, the creator, He's the cause and effect of our life. We don't cause it to happen. We don't make it happen. He just comes out of us as, as He goes around. We're just a vessel and a vehicle. I got a section in the book. It's called Vines and Branches, Vessels and Beverages. He's the vine. We're the branch. We're the vessel. He is the water. You see, this, this is the way it works out. People say, how does this work out? What do I need to what? Do. You don't need to do anything. You need to stop doing and it'll come out. This is what happens. We did a wedding this weekend. Did a wedding this weekend. Went to Charleston. And uh, I told Kelsey, I said, this was very poor planning to have a wedding during football season. <laughs> and especially, especially when Clemson's playing, at 3.30, you have a wind at 5. What were you thinking? <laughs> and so, you know, we laughed about it, you know, we, we joked about it and stuff. But, but we went down there. So we, we stayed at the place, and uh, 
I'm trying to figure it out because you have to check out at noon, right? I check out at noon. So I go to the desk and I'm thinking, there's nobody here. And Friday there was nobody there. And so I go in and I say, yeah, could we possibly get a later checkout time? Because I would have liked to stay there until 4 o'clock. The wedding was at 5. We could have stayed there, got dressed, and went on. And not have to go out somewhere and just sit around, kicked out of the motel. So she said, yeah, we can let you stay the one. I said, well, that's you, my child. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you very much. We'll, we'll take one. So about 1.30, she called our room and says, they can't get to you until a little bit later in where you can stay there too. I said, bless you. <laughs> so we got to stay for a little bit longer. That morning, this is the way it worked out. You see, God is on the stool. When you let him on the stool, he's living his life in it. He's got an agenda that he didn't tell me about. Now, we have a problem with that that he didn't tell me about it. And we need to, we work on a need to know basis and we need to know. <laughs> See, and that's, so we get up and we go to breakfast. And so we eat breakfast. And I'm not thinking about trying to reach somebody for Jesus. I'm not trying to encourage nobody. I'm not trying to do anything. I'm just eating the breakfast. So we're sitting here and a couple right over here at this table over here. They're, they're an older couple. They're probably about as old as we are. They're older. And so they're sitting over there, and, and I say, are y'all here for a wedding? Because when I went to ask that woman about staying a little bit longer, I said, we're with the wedding party. She said, everybody here is with the wedding party. <laughs> you know, they were, it must be the place to have wedding parties. You know, the place stays in the hotel. Everybody here is for the wedding. So I said, are y'all here for a wedding? And I was not prepared for what the guy said. The guy says, no, we're not, we're not here for a wedding. We've been here four days. Last week we found our son dead. And we've come down here to take care of his affairs. I said, I am so, so sorry. I can't imagine losing a child. And he said, everybody's been so nice down here. So we were we were real anxious about coming down here and not knowing anybody and not knowing where to go for help and anything like that. And so he said, but everybody's been so the coroner calls us every day to ask us if there's anything we can do. And, and they've taken such good care of us. They've shown us where to go eat. They've shown us what to do. And papers to fill out. Everybody's been so good. And I said, I'm, I'm just really really so sorry and uh, and his wife came up her name was Carrie his name was John she came up she said this is not our first rodeo we lost another child four years ago and I was like Lord have mercy and Lord said they, they, I want to I want to talk to them I said can we pray and they said sure so we just stood there and we just prayed and you could just feel God just kind of come along Hold their head close to his heart. The rhythms of his heart speaks speaks to their soul. And it was there, and then when we got there, I said, "This just you know, God's going to take care of it. God will guide you. Just trust Him. Just let Him know He will tell you what you need to do when you need to do it, and He will be peace for you. He won't give you peace. He will be your peace for you. And so when God said you need to give Him a book, so I had a fingerprints of the heart, footprints of the heart, and a car. And I said, I just, and it's got some things in there that addresses their situation. And I just said, can I give you a book? And they said, sure. And so um, I said, she said, but we're leaving tomorrow. I said, I got it in the car. I said, what room are you in? They were in room 118. You want to guess where our room was? Room 116. Right next door. Isn't that a coincidence? How that happened? You know? I didn't even think about it. Jesus just stepped in and says, Can I borrow your body and your tongue for a minute? Sure. And God just did it, didn't think nothing about it, didn't try, didn't even think about it. Jesus just it just comes out. So I said, Well, you know, that's a pretty good day. Now we can go on and do the wedding. You know? So we 
we get out about two o'clock. We eat a little bit of breakfast and it's about two o'clock. And uh, everyone said, well, why don't we just go eat? And I said, if we're going to go eat, we've got to go to a sports bar so we watch television. <laughs> so we're going to watch the football game. <laughs> and now I really know that I am God's favorite because we, you know, we looked around and one said, well, would you go to Arby's? And I said, well, there's an Applebee's. And so we went to Applebee's. We walked in there and walled the wall and put it all in. I knew I was going to say And so we ordered and we're watching the football game. And this little lady comes out. And uh, we come to find out, she told us her age. She said she was 42 and had a couple of kids. And, and she was a child, 42. 42 gets younger every day. <laughs> and so we get to talk, and her name was Becky. And, uh, and I said, well, Becky, what you going to do when you grow up? She said, well, I love doing what I'm doing. She said, I worked for a little mom and pop hamburger place that had really good hamburgers and food. But it was mom and pop. They couldn't make it. They had to close it down. So I, didn't, I lost my job. I've been wait waitressing for a long time. And uh, she said, I've been here for a lot of months. But she said, you know, I have a hard time in a place like this because I know nothing about alcohol. She said, my daddy is a preacher. Baptist. <laughs> and she said, uh, we, he was a real legalistic preacher. She said, uh, we had to wear our dresses a certain length and we couldn't cut our hair. You know, we, it was really, really strict. And, uh, and I said, uh, hey, I said, I used to be your daddy. <laughs> I used to be just like that. I mean, I would not buy asthma medicine on Sunday because I was making somebody work at the pharmacy, so I just almost died of asthma because I wouldn't buy anything on Sunday. Because I thought God would be disappointed if I did. So, honey, I know where you're coming from. But back about 11 years ago, God set me free from all that, and it ain't nothing like that. I can tell you something about that. And you can see a little glimmer of hope. She said, you know, always, you know, I said, if this is all there is, my goodness, is this, you know, just trying to keep the rules? And I said, no, honey, it's not all there is. There's infinitely so much more. She said, well, you know, Baptists believe that you once saved, you're always saved. Then there's other denominations that believe you can lose your salvation. Well, we believe if you didn't live good enough, you lost your salvation. I said, that can't possibly be true, honey. It can't possibly be true. And I'll tell you why it can't be true. Because when, when and, I, and I'm assuming that you're saved, if you grew up in that household, you were, you were saved whether you wanted to or not. Jesus just didn't come and wash your sins away and then said, try to act like me the rest of your life and we'll see how good you do when you get in or not. He said, believe it. She said, that was it. I said, that's the way, that's the way it is. But I want, I want to show you something. This is what Scripture says. And everything your daddy's been preaching has been right there in front of him, but he couldn't see it because I couldn't see it for years. It's just right there at one time. Galatians 2, 20 says, I'm crucified with Christ and I don't believe anymore. Christ lives in me. And Paul said, when Christ, who is your life? See, listen, you're, you're still trying to live a Christian life. Jesus is the only one who can live the Christian life. He's crazy wild about you and he wouldn't come to die for you. I mean, he, he don't need anything for you. What in the world can you do for God that he needs you to do for him? Well, nothing I want to know. That, that's true. He just loves you. Listen, I'm going to say something that's going to shock you. God did not create you to live for Him. He created you so He could live for you. I never heard that. I said, I, I didn't realize that either until I had grandchildren. Uh, my grandchildren, I, they don't live for me. I live for them. I'm crazy wild about them. They're not very productive. Matter of fact, they're destructive. <laughs> And I would die for him. That's the way God feels about you. You can't lose your salvation because Jesus is eternal life. Amen. He's not something you earn. He is a person. I said, I want you to look at this water right here. And I had my sweet tea in the water. And I said, I want you to look at this right here. Jesus is the water of life. 
He is the same. But you see, I like a little flavor in my water. And this is Southern sweet tea. Now, you may be lemonade, a raspberry or whatever, but see, God wants to live His life through flavors. That's why He made us all unique the way He created us. We're not cookie cutter, we're everybody's the same. And I said, I want you to watch this. And I squirted a little bit in there and I stirred it up. And I said, let me ask you something. Can I get that flavor back out now? She said, nope, this in there now. You can't get it out. I said, once Jesus becomes fused for you and becomes your life, there ain't no way you can get away from it. Forever. Amen. Because wherever He goes, you go. And wherever you go, He goes. And He is in heaven now, and you're right there with Him when you realize it or not. And it's not something that you earn. It's something that He just lives in through for you. And she said, that is beautiful. I've never heard that before. I said, honey, you're the reason I'm writing this book. And if you will, I'm going to give you my email. If you will send me your email, I will give you the first book that comes off the press. You just send me your, your address, and I'll send it to you. And I'm going to tell you what, God will change your life. He will transform your life. And you can see the hope come back in us. She said, I've always run I said, we're something. I said, honey, there is something. And I thought, I was just going to get something to eat and watch football game. God said, I'm multitask. <laughs> I'm multitask. <laughs> so we got to watch the football game, we got to eat, and we ate too much, but we sit there and talk to Becky, and it was just, it was one. And God, God lets us do that for free. And all we got to do is be. Just be. I, I, I want to share this with you, and then I'm going to let you know. Uh, this, is, this is what... I want you to understand my heart about what we're here for. Becky is never going to come to Germany. She lives in Monk's Corner. She's not going to come to Germany. I can't get her to drive here so I can teach her about Jesus being your life. See, this, it, we have this mindset, we've been to church, we need everybody to come here so we can teach them about Jesus. Why? Because they don't sit in my bed and do anything. They just come here, walk out and say, that was a really nice sermon. And if people come in, I come in just as I am and I left just like I was. God's <laughs> not into that. Jesus... What God has called us to do here at Journey is this. He said, I want those that come to this little journey family to understand that if they would just depend on me and trust me, I will be more than their electric scooter. I will be their life. And everywhere you go, I just want to touch people, connect with people, encourage people, love people. And if you just let me, me and you will have a ball doing it. If he says, remember the word, number one, dependent. Dependent. <coughs> Faith is all about depending. God says, depend on me. If I believe it, I'll go out there and live dependently. He doesn't need my help. He doesn't need me to walk into a restaurant and say, a restaurant and say, okay, who we going to talk to? I don't even do that. They just come up and I say, what's your name? My name is Becky. Good, Becky. It's good to see you. Thank you for taking such good care of us today. Didn't get her saved. Didn't ask her if she was saved. Didn't ask her if she was going to heaven when she died. Didn't ask none of that. Jesus just wanted to let her know how crazy wild she was about her. Through a, through a couple of people that were, you know, it was funny when we were talking to her. <laughs> And uh, she said, uh, I said, uh, I'm a preacher. And she said, her daddy was her. I said, I'm a preacher. And, uh, and I said, the reason we're here is we got kicked out. You know, that's why. She said, you're a preacher? You got kicked out of your church? I said, no, we got kicked out of the motel. <laughs> She said, she said, well, I'm a 
for a minute he was in there and the church kicked you out. Did he go to the wedding? I said, yeah, give him a big discount. <laughs> so, <laughs> we just, you have a good time with Jesus as you are. It's the way it's supposed to be. This is how it works. And you know, our part is to trust it and let it. His part is to do the work. We're just branches and hanging the fruit. We don't hang the fruit. Let me ask you, in the winter time, when the sap's not the end of the vine, it's kind of resting, okay? This branch over here can't, it can't produce the fruit, can it? It, 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 it can't produce the fruit. We don't produce fruit. We just bear fruit. We're just fruit hangers. That's all we do. We just hang the fruit. The wife comes up through the vine. I am the vine. You are the branches. He that abides, permanent, stays attached to me. The same brings forth much fruit. For without me, you can do what? Nothing. Nothing. You cut that branch off, see how much fruit it's going to bear. <coughs> Zippo. All we do is hang fruit. Listen. All I'm trying to most religious churches, now here's what you need to do. You need to get out there and witness for them. Study for them. Go out there and compel them. And die. God says, I just want you to just go live and I'll tell you what we're going to do is the only way. There's no must, no fuss, no bother. And all he's waiting on you to do is to say, okay, and go. Remember this, God cannot steer a parked car. If you're waiting on God to tell you what He's going to do today, we didn't get up tomorrow, okay, well, we're going to stay right here in this room until you tell us about that couple and Becky and what you're going to do today. We're going to wait on you to tell us what you're going to do. That is not going to happen. Because one thing that God does not tell you is how he is going to do it. He just says, I'm going to do it. Well, how are you going to do it? That is not any of your business. And usually he does it in ways that you never would even think about. Never even imagine. And the back door in every which way. All you got to do is just go live. Just go live. Live in reckless abandon. And we used to call that, we used to look for kids when I coached to put on the kickoff team that would run down the field in what we call reckless abandon. They only had one thing on their mind. The guy that called the football, you go find him and seek and destroy the guy who called the football. <laughs> reckless abandon. Just throw caution to the wind. Don't worry about getting blocked. You just beam in on him and you just go down through there and do it. That's what Jesus wants to do. You just get out there and live in reckless abandon. He'll take care of the rest. Now, here's how this works. I don't think God, we can ever make a mistake which way we go or whatever. God's still got something for it either way. You understand what I'm saying? We, we came out of that wedding venue. It was out in the barn, out in the field. And it was in the middle of the field. And I stood here and the sun was right there. And I said, I feel like a Clemson opponent standing out in the hot sun of my Clemson over there in the shade. And so it, it, it was out there like that. And so we, we go out there and we do that wedding. And, uh, and then we come, get ready to come home. So we come out of the farm, we come to the road. And, one of the, and the girl in the box said, turn right. The girl in the car said, come and wait. And I felt boxed in. I said, she's telling us where to go. We came in this way yesterday because that's where the boat came off. Well, that's the way we came. That's the shortest way. I said, this girl's telling us because we're up the road. So, I said, we're going right. <laughs> so I turned right. And so I said, honey, just chill. It's going to be a plan. If we go this way, God's got a plan for it. If we go this way, God's got a plan. Ain't no sense getting all tore 
of the world. Don't let you don't turn the light before the foundation of the world will catch us in hand. So you just go. You just go and you see what happens. And then when it happens, you say, God wanted us to go this way. But you never see that up front. You only see it in retrospect. And you see all those spiritual markers. You see the footprints of God all back there. But you don't see them this way. You only see them this way. And in the meantime, you just say, well, God's led me all this way. He'll lead me this way. So we're going to, I'm going to take off again. If you will like that, we'll help Jesus change the world. I'm not change the world, but we can change Becky's world. And we can change that couple's world. Like they've never seen it before. If we just see Jesus in and through the Lord's image. Let's pray.